Fang Lesson um, 9 of uh, Module 4. But before we start, I kind of probably need to review a little bit from last week since it's been, what, four days, five days that I haven't had you? If I have the number... One half times eight. How can I set that problem up? What do I need to do? Chance? Okay, so draw one box. Each one's one half. Would that work? It might work. Draw one line. And what needs to go on top? If this is my denominator, what's my numerator going to be? The top number will be the... Okay, because remember we have the number 8 and we're taking one half of it. So what would one half equal? <coughs> it's got to be four because I have two boxes. Eight divided by two is four. And if I had four plus four, it would equal eight. <coughs> okay. Do this one with your neighbor or on your own. I'll be drawing sticks to check on you, and I also, when I come around, want to see boxes on your desk or on your paper. Okay, so as I was walking around, this is what I saw, which is perfect. We know that we have our tape diagram, and we're going to be multiplying 10 times a fraction, and that fraction is 3 fifths, so we're going to look at the Denominator, one, two, three, four, five. If I took my whole number 10 and divided it into five equal parts, how many would be in each part? Two. Two. And they want to know what three-fifths of that is. So I'm going to take three of those boxes, and I'm going to say two, four, six. So 10 times three-fifths equals... Now let's look at number lesson number nine, dealing with conversions. And you have a conversion sheet on one of your previous pages. Uh, what is the mnemonic device that we use when we talk about the metric system? Do you guys remember what it is? What the saying is? Starts with a King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. King Henry doesn't usually, which is the unit, that would be grams, meters, liters, doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Oh. I don't usually make an M, I guess. Hmm. Chocolate, milk. And then, if we go this way, for every place we go to the left, our number is getting... So remember, as you go to the left, your decimal goes like this to the... Right, and as you go to the right, your decimal goes this way, and it goes up in increments of how much? If you go one place over, it's 10 or a tenth. Good. So we have <coughs> on C, look at problem set, lesson 9, letter C, 5, 6 of a year. Equals 
equals blank months. Well, what's the first thing you probably need to ask yourself? Chance? How many times? Well, how do you know about the 12, though? What do you have to ask yourself first, Chance? How many months are in a year? And Chance said there's 12 months in a year. So what do you think our tape diagram is going to have on top of it? A 12 because there are 12 months in one year, right? So you make a tape diagram. We know there's 12 months. And how many ways are we going to divide up our tape diagram? How many boxes will we have, Morgan? We'll have six boxes. We'll have six boxes because our denominator is six. And how many are we trying to figure out? How many what part of that fraction are we trying to figure out? Five. We want to know how many total five equal, right? Well, before we do that, we have to figure out how many one equals. So, what is one sixth of a year? One sixth of a year. Two. How did you know that? Perfect. So we know that 12 divided into six parts is each part would be two, right? So on your paper below, you're going to write one sixth times one year is the same as one sixth times 12 months so 1 6 equals 2 but what would 5 6 equal what would 5 6 equal we know every single one of these is 2 2 Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. You can always double check. That's how you double check your work. Make sure all of them add up to the same number on top. What's five, six? Ten. Okay, so we have, let's see, let's count. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Or you could say two times five equals ten. So, five six of a year equals 10 months. How many centimeters are in one meter? Hmm. Centimeters in a meter. meter. Did I ever turn that back on? Yes, I did. King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. So, here's the meter, here's the centimeter. Hmm. One meter, so we have one right here. Remember that chart you guys have that you can like draw little mm, upside down ewe things on to move it over? Here's our decimal. We always have an imaginary decimal after our number, remember? Okay, how'd you know that? They give you a chart, but what if you didn't have the chart? How could I look at this? How could I look at this? You beat me to the punch there, bud. That's true, you can look at a chart. What else could you do? What if I didn't have a chart? Yeah, so I can play like my decimals right there, right? And I go one, two. One, two, and for every blank I have, I put in my zeros. Because someday you won't have a handy dandy chart. But while you have it, I guess you might as well use it. So four fifths meter, so what's gonna go?
What's going to go up on top? Luke just gave us an answer a minute ago, so what's going to go on top? Madison? 100. And how many ways are we dividing that 100? How many parts are we dividing it into? Camden. Five parts. And so I know that one fifth times one meter is the same as one fifth times how many centimeters? 100 cms. The question is how much is in four fifths? So first you have to find out how much is in one fifth. Number twenty one. How much is in one fifth of a hundred? Twenty. Twenty? Because twenty times five is a hundred. So we have twenty. But do they want to know how much is in one fifth? No. You need to know that to write your one fifth equals 100 centimeters. That would be 20. One fifth times 100 centimeters equals 20. But five, four fifths times equals. What's it going to equal? Number 13. What do you think? What's four times? 20. Okay. Four times twenty is eighty. So, our answer would be 4 fifth times 100 equals 80 centimeters. That's pretty easy the way they do it on here. Wow. The way I used to teach it seems hard now, and I thought that way was easy. This is easy. Okay, questions about that before we work on this word problem? Look at word problem number three. At the market, Mr. Paul bought seven eighths pound of cashews and three quarters pound of walnuts. How many ounces of cashews did Mr. Paul buy? One. How many ounces are in a pound? Ounces in a pound. Sixteen. So how many total ounces is he going to maybe have? I don't know. What's going to be our big number that goes up on top? Jaden? 16? Okay, I'm going to have you work this one on your own. Seven-eighths of it is cashews and three-fourths are walnuts. Well, that's interesting. I wonder how you're going to find out Hmm, maybe you can't work this one on your own. Hmm. What do I need to do? I have set of eight boxes and then I have four. That doesn't make any sense. What's it say he did? Are we reading all the information? Look at your information closely. Ask it for ounces. What do you think? Um, he, bought cashews. he bought he bought cashews <laughs> and walnuts. So how many tape diagrams should you have for this one? Um, 
how many ounces of cashews? Yeah. Yeah, but for total, though, you'll have two, right? Because some of you, your initial thought when you look at that would be that you're going to divide up this whole thing and one half, one part of it you're going to have walnuts and one part you're going to have cashews, but that's not going to be the case in this. In other problems we've had, you've done that. Sugar away. Away. Thank you. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is cashews. The second thing is walnuts. And then it says, how many more ounces of cashews than walnuts did Mr. Paul buy? How many more signifies that you're going to have to do this operation? And what would that be? How many more? When you read something like that, what do you think you're going to have to do? Add. Add? Subtract. Subtract. Yeah. Okay, I want you to solve A, B, and C on your own, and I'm going to come around and look to see how you're doing. Okay, it looks like you guys pretty much have this. Um, cashews, he bought seven eighths of a pound, so you divided it into seven parts. Three. And one more. He didn't divide it into seven parts. What am I talking about? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Divided eight parts. Then 16 divided by eight is. Two, so I was walking around, I saw two in all your boxes. You guys are doing an amazing job. I think everybody got it right. And then seven eighths. You're gonna take that. Two times seven is fourteen. So for A you have fourteen ounces. Make sure you put your label. For the walnuts. Do we still are we still talking about sixteen ounces? Yep. And he did three quarters of a pound. So sixteen divided by four is sixteen divided by four is four. If you have three of those, three times four is twelve ounces. Then it asks you to find how many more ounces of cashews and walnuts did Mr. Paul buy? Well, he bought 14 ounces of cashews. He bought 12 ounces of walnuts. So what would you have to do? You would have to, everybody, subtract. He bought how many more ounces? Go ahead. Two more ounces then of cashews and walnuts. For D... D, they kind of add something else to that. They say, if Miss Toombs bought one and one half pounds of pistachios, who bought more nuts? Mr. Paul or Miss Toombs? How many more ounces? Could we actually take seven eighths and three fourths and add them together? Could we do that? Take what we already have and add it together? Well, if we did that, we would have to try to find the um, common denominator. Ooh, I like the way you talk. I like that. Common denominator. So, why don't you guys try to work through that one? Seven eighths and plus three fourths, you'd have to do that first, right? Add up total how many pounds of nuts did Mr. Paul buy? And then what are you going to do to find out the difference between how many pistachios were bought and how many nuts he bought? What do you have to do then? After you find your common denominator and you add them together, then what do you do? You find out how much, how many pounds. Okay, find out how many pounds. You find out the uh, mixed number. The mixed number? I actually didn't do it all. I just converted the one and one half pounds to 24 ounces. Mm -hmm. And then I added. Good. Good. You can you can do it you can do it that way too. But sometimes we're not all thinking on the same wavelength, so if that works for you, you can do it that way.
You can convert it pounds to ounces and take what the information you already have or you can add find common denominator which is also good because some of you need extra practice. When you find a common denominator, what are you looking for to begin with? The LC, the least common denominator, denominator which means, remember, you have 7 eighths and 3 fourths. Remember, you have 8 and 4 like this. While you could think through this in your head, it's always good to get the extra practice. What goes in both eight and four? Okay, someone said two. You could do two. You could do four. Let's do two. Two goes into eight. How many times? Two goes into four. Two times. Can I keep going? Yep. Are your line? What goes into both those numbers? Two goes into four. Two goes into two. One. How do I find my least common denominator? How do I do that now? What do I have to do? Okay. So you multiply all these together. Now, I have had this before in the past where kids have missed a problem because they said this was. Six. Oh, two times three. Is that six? We have two three times, but two times two is four times two is eight times one is eight. You guys remember this process still? Eight times one equals eight times one. So what am I going to do at the top? Times, right at the top, <laughs> times one. This is times what? Two. two. Top numbers times two. Seven times one is? Seven. And three times two is six. Six plus seven is? How do I fix that? Okay, one and five eighths. Perfect. One and five eighths would be your answer. And then Miss Toombs bought one and one half pounds of pistachios. So then you would have to do what with those two numbers? Subtract them. One. Okay, so you do one and five eighths minus one and one half. Go ahead and solve that. I'm going to come around and look. Make sure you guys are with me on this, and then we will call it a day.